the great Zig Ziglar said, your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. Our guest today will share another awesome Zig Ziglar quote and so much more. This is the Facility Management Innovator Podcast, where we talk with FM industry leaders about workplace trends, challenges, and the future of the built environment. This show is brought to you by KRL Connections, providing information, consulting, and marketing expertise to help organizations deliver workplace innovation to the facility management community. Hey there, how's it going? Mike Petreski here to welcome you to another edition of the Facility Management Innovator Podcast. This is episode three, and I am so ready to introduce you to yet another FM innovator. He has built quite a legacy in the facilities marketplace, and his name is Mark Schnur of Bravo Facility Services. We sat down not too long ago, and we had a great conversation, and you'll hear it in just a few moments. But first, can I just say that Zig Ziglar quote at the top of the show has me all fired up. Such timeless wisdom from Zig. That quote so perfectly sums up, I believe, what is absolutely required to be a success, especially in a sales and marketing role or... As a facility manager, where you certainly face unexpected challenges each day, just dealing with people, your customers, or your building's occupants, having that positive attitude, it really makes a difference and is so critical to our effectiveness in the workplace. You know, when I was just starting out in the business world, I used to ride around in my car and listen to Zig Ziglar cassette tapes all day. That's right, kids, a cassette tape, not streaming internet audio. Not even a CD. We're going back to the late 80s when we were rocking out to mixtapes on cassette. So there you go. You can picture me wearing my baby blue members only jacket, cruising around in my little red Corvette. No, wait, that was Prince. I was in a little red Ford Escort. Pretty cool. With my full on mullet blowing in the breeze. That's right. I had such a great, great image in the 80s. But the new wave music, I used to love Duran Duran, The Cure, Adam and the Ants. Echo and the Bunnymen, Talking Heads, I could go on and on with that list. So please leave me your comment on who you think the best new wave band of the 80s might have been. And we'll talk more about that later. But back to Zig Ziglar. He had such a way with inspiring quotes and and storytelling in his books. I mean, I remember one story about a guy who came to Zig's house and tried to sell him this automatic pool cleaner called the Creepy Crawley. I don't remember all the details, but remember Zig saying over and over that the product was called the creepy crawly. So Zig was so good. Anyway, by now I think you're getting a good idea about what this podcast is all about. A little bit of inspiration, I hope, and some motivation to elevate the facility management profession. We did create this podcast as a vehicle to share with you, the FM community, some real life examples of how industry partners are collaborating with facility managers and how they're using their expertise and creativity to deliver the resources that are absolutely necessary for FMs to efficiently and effectively manage their facilities. That's why our tagline at KRL Connections is Real People, Real Solutions. Now, specifically on this episode, Mark and I will discuss his career background and how he has built a legacy through IFMA by working hard to become known as a valuable resource to the FM community. We'll discover the fact that in addition to that positive attitude, real long-term success comes when you have what Mark calls a service-to-others mentality, where helping others first is a top priority. We will discuss opportunities for connecting and collaborating with facility managers, and we'll also talk about the trends Mark is seeing towards out sourcing and what he has done to help build best practices in facility management. Once again, I must say, as I mentioned during the last episode, that I am so very thankful to these first few guests like Mark, who put their confidence in me uh, by just sitting down for this interview well before we knew what we were really doing. We were at the beginning of what I call the podcasting learning curve. So while the audio quality is not totally perfect here, I hope you'll get as much out of this conversation as I did. And thank you again, Mark. Here we go. My guest on this episode is Mark Schnur, and he is an FM innovator. Welcome, Mark. Hi, Mike. How are you? Thanks for having me. Mark's a senior vice president at Bravo Facility Services, one of the largest privately held facility support companies in the country. Bravo provides a wide variety of fully integrated facility support solutions to the FM marketplace. And uh, Mark's also been a longtime member of the capital chapter of IFMA. In fact, we met there probably eight or nine years ago at a golf tournament, right? 
Yeah, since 19, 1995. And I uh, knew right away that you were passionate about advancing the profession of facility management through IFMA. And in fact, um, you were the chapter president That's at one right. point. That's right, 2003. And uh, why don't you tell me more about that? Tell me more about your involvement with IFMA and how you want to be known in the FM community. Well, I think the way I'd like to be known in the FM community is for everyone to see me as a, a valued resource for their business. You know, when the FM community views you as their consultant, regardless of the business area that you're in, someone who's concerned with their best interest, you become indispensable. So that's how I think Bravo would like to position themselves. And that's what I try to do. Absolutely. And many of us don't actually end up here on purpose. The facility management world seems to capture us from different uh, backgrounds. I like to learn about people's backgrounds and how you became involved with this uh, marketplace. So tell me a little bit about your FM journey. Where'd you go to school and how'd you end up here today? Well, I went to Villanova University, a BA in economics, minor communications. I started in the financial services industry uh, that led to an opportunity in the building security industry, and that supported the commercial real estate industry. And I leveraged contacts in the real estate services world uh, that led me to facility support services, janitorial services, and uh, now I'm stuck. Like you said, I just got here by accident, but uh, here I am. Stuck and loving it. Well, let's learn more about you personally um, and find out more about what makes you that valued resource to the FMs each day. Do you have a favorite song? Yeah, I, I kind of like uh, We Are Family by Sister Sledge. Nice. So that might be a little bit too old for, for a lot of people that will be listening to this, but uh, it just makes me happy whenever I hear it. It brings back a lot of memories, and, uh, and anyone else that uh, happens to be around seems to join in with my, with my enjoyment. Get up, um, everybody, and sing. Right. <laughs> But knowing people for the past 20 years in this chapter makes them a part of my extended family. And I think that that song applies here as well as everywhere else in my life. So that's that's probably why I really like that song. What's your favorite movie? Mike, great question. Uh, I have a lot of favorite movies uh, without giving it too much thought. Uh, Seabiscuit. I also read the book and uh, the horse uh, Seabiscuit was not considered elite. Not the biggest, not the fastest, not the smartest, but in spite of all odds, had the heart, will, and determination to be successful no matter what. And uh, it shows that having heart, will, and determination is all you need if you really want something. And uh, I, I related to that. I think that describes me uh, and how I am. And so I really bonded with, uh, with Seabiscuit. Awesome. I love those inspirational, especially sports movies. Like, uh, absolutely. You could be in, you could be Rudy, the Rudy of, uh, the FM world. Yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> you have any, uh, particular motivational quotes or inspirational quotes that you could share with us? There's a couple that, that I would say resonate with me all the time. And, uh, one of them that I learned was help others get what they want and you will get what you want. Zig Ziglar, right? I, I believe in that. I think that's Zig. I love uh, Zig. So I, I, I live by that. And uh, another one was uh, from my other one of my other favorite movies, which not a lot of people would get. But uh, but Tom Hanks and Castaway and uh, not to to get into his speech. But uh, he says one never knows what the tide will bring. And really what that means to me is that you really have no control. That control is an illusion and that ultimately uh, life will surprise you in good ways and bad. And it's best to ride the wave you're on, never getting too high or too low. And uh, so being around the chapter for for over 20 years, uh, you have some highs and, and lows. But I've learned to kind of stay right on that wave and just ride it and never get too up or too down. Excellent. You know, that first quote from Zig Ziglar reminds me of an Albert Einstein famous quote. Einstein said once, try not to become a man of success, but rather a man of value. And uh, both Agreed. that quote and the and the Ziglar quote reminds me of what your philosophy is about. Absolutely. It's about bringing value to people first and, right. and the success will follow. Right. So I think we all agree uh, that, that as industry partners, we must really invest that time up front and uh, prepare ourselves first so we can be a value to facility managers. How do you consider... Or what do you consider your expertise to be and what parts of your job are you most passionate about? Well, I think that last qu question you asked about uh, favorite quote is a nice segue into to this question uh, because I believe in helping others get what they want. And like uh, um, the late Muhammad Ali said, service is our rent for our life on this earth. So to be successful in life, uh, you must have a service to others mentality. I really believe that success is not defined by money, but what contributions you make to others in their life, making a difference in their life and in whatever you do. 
So that's really how I try to live. I'm very passionate about being the best in whatever, whatever it is that I'm doing, whether it's with Bravo, whether it's at IFMA, in my personal life and anything that I can do, I try to be the best at it. Uh, but really the most satisfaction that I get today is helping others become more successful. I really enjoy that. So that's a part of that, that service for others. You're helping others get better and that, that's where I get my satisfaction. That's great. And as, as someone who's newer to IFMA and has been able to benefit from the, the foundation that, that your, your work has, has laid for the chapter and, and for all of uh, us, it's really a, it's great to have this chance to, to hear from you. And, and I, I certainly hope you recognize how appreciative the folks within the chapter and the FM community are for, for the hard work that the early leaders of the chapter did and, and, and the, the sweat equity was put into our chapter to make it as the success it is today. So thank Appreciate you. For that more appreciate that and, and let's talk more about that that fm community we have through ifma and other organizations um there's there's lots of events there's lots of education conferences world workplace is is awesome we always see each other out there tell me more about some of the ifma events that you most enjoy and some of the opportunities for collaboration you've had because of those ifma uh, opportunities you know world workplace like you mentioned is always great and the best thing about that is getting away and really getting to know the people within your own chapter. You think you go halfway across the country and you go somewhere and you're thinking, why am I doing that? But that really helps you connect better with uh, with those people from your chapter. So that's been a great benefit. But personally, I really enjoy the holiday events and the chapter anniversary events. Uh, the 25th and the 30th, I was the MC at both of those. Uh, so that was a lot of fun for me. And these events typically bring everyone out and, are, and everyone's happy being a part of something that they contributed to. So uh, it's nice to see that, be involved in that, and be a part of it. And actually, probably the most memorable one was many years ago, and I don't want to tell you how many, <laughs> uh, but it was closer to the beginning of my tenure than the end of it. And uh, I was an auctioneer at an IFMA fundraising event at AOL and auctioned off a piece of art that was essentially a photo of four lemons that auctioned off one lemon at a time. And I don't think you were there. I don't um, remember that, no. But somehow, I, I don't know how that came about. It was probably the glass of wine or two that I had before that, and uh, that probably helped me. Uh, but this was ultimately, this piece of art was sold for a nice amount, and the attendees responded very enthusiastically and somehow remember this moment and remind me of it from time to time, sort of my IFMA moment, if you will. That's great. So you have been around a while. We won't go into the details of how long, but at uh, the same time, I want to hear your experience and your perspective. How have you seen the FM world change over, let's say, the, the fast past uh, five or 10 years? From, from my perspective, uh, being in the IFMA community, but not necessarily being in FM, I see that outsourcing has grown significantly. Uh, I'm a part of that. Uh, this has brought a uh, great challenge to the FM community with respect to future survival in a world moving at light speed. Uh, most experienced FMs are on the tail end of their career, and the new generation isn't quite ready to, to lead, opening the door for a new model that can adapt to this rapid change. Yeah, and that's a, a trend I see continuing. What do you think things will look like 10 years from now? I, I think the outsourcing will continue, and the, uh, the FM community will either find a way to adapt and or hold off this change or become a part of it. So uh, it should be interesting. With that in mind, you and I both have college-age children that now are starting their careers in this new workplace, and, and it's a whole other world than it was back when we started. Uh, what might you do differently, or might you look back and say, I, I do that the exact same way when it comes to uh, you're new on the job, your first week on the job. What are you going to do out there? Probably, having come out just now, I'd be a little bit more technology computer savvy. Um I've, I'm doing okay with that, uh, but I still really believe in that service to others mentality. So I don't think that would change too much. Uh, I would probably apply those that new expertise from the technology with with that mindset, and hopefully that would get me far. That's great. I don't think it ever changes the uh, need for uh, personal relationship and building trust. And um, talk to that more. Tell me about an opportunity you've had to collaborate uh, with a, a personal relationship that maybe was built out of the IFMA community or somewhere else. Tell me about that. There's been several of those, Mike, but typically the most valuable ones are those that result in a best practice. And that's something that I've really spent a lot of time working with FMs on in, in our chapter, in, our, in this FM community, uh, is how can, we, how can we get better 
and what were they doing before? What are they doing now? And what are others doing? And what can we do to to make that a best practice? So uh, Rick Kahn, who uh, I've known for several years, many years, uh, he was working at the Corcoran Gallery at the time. He had an internal staff at, at the time and outsourced to improve the service and, and reduce the overall cost. So he outsourced to Bravo. And while we achieved the primary goals of improving the service and reducing the overall cost, uh, we were also able to integrate a tailored museum training program that was ultim- ultimately endorsed by the Corcoran and then shared with other museums, including another chapter member, Dave Samick, who's at the National Gallery of Art. So it extended beyond just helping uh, Rick and the Corcoran achieve what they wanted to. We took it to the next level. And then that experience and that best practice was shared with another FM. And and I know I've talked to Dave and he shared it with others in his community. So uh, that was personally satisfying for me and it made them better. And again, uh, like in the National Gallery of Art, there really wasn't an opportunity there because they have their own staff. But I was still able to share that. It was still appreciated. And I helped make a difference. And I think that's what it's all about. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're building a culture of collaboration and shared resources and education. And really, that's what IFMA is all about. And it's really an honor to be a part of that organization. So thank you, Mark. I appreciate your time today. Thank you, Mike. It's been great being here. There you go. Good stuff and good times with Mark Schnur of Bravo Facility Services. What did you think? Please email me your feedback. Connections at krel.com is the address. Or drop us a comment over at iTunes. While you're there, you can click the subscribe button so you can keep up with the new episodes as they are released in the coming weeks. And of course, as always, any suggestions you have for interviews, topics you'd like to hear discussed, anything that would help us enrich the facility management community, we'd love to hear from you. Please tweet me at Mike Petresky. I'll look forward to continuing the conversation with you. And I sincerely appreciate you listening to this podcast. You guys rock. Thank you so, so much. I will talk with you again soon. And until then, be an FM innovator. Peace out. You've been listening to the Facility Management Innovator Podcast. We hope you found this discussion beneficial as we work together to elevate the FM community by building partnerships that lead to innovative workplace solutions. For more information about facility management collaboration and marketing resources, visit krelconnections.com.